Hey YouTube, this is Sam from Chalice and Chains, um, and I just wanted to do a quick video today about game prep and um, sort of my philosophies on how I prepare for games, and also the reason that I do so, because I know for me, I don't have a lot of time, so I have to be very efficient with my time when I'm prepping for games. And so what I found is that I I came from D&D 3.5, you know, high school, college, I had lots of time. I tend to want to put in lots of detail. And like most DMs who've been around for a while, you find out that you way over prep, that no, you know, <laughs> session prep ever survives the players when they finally start playing. And what ended up happening though was after college, I got out of gaming altogether for about seven years. So when I finally came back in this last December, um, you know, I had a friend who was running D and D three point five, and you know, after a couple of sessions, we talked, and he was like, "Man, I'd really rather be a player." And I was like, "Well, I'd really rather DM." And at that point, I had discovered fifth edition, and I was like, "This is way better." Um, and then, you know, between that and reading, you know, The Lazy Dungeon Master by Sly Flourish and, you know, becoming engaged with all of the, you know, community on YouTube, I discovered a lot about prep. And what I found was the most important was have a cool idea, but also trust your players to come up with a lot of stuff, you know. And so, like, just recently, um, in my the zombie apocalypse one shot that I ran, I set it up with basically three scenes. You know, the opening scene, well, I guess four scenes. The opening scene where they wake up to find out there's a zombie apocalypse and they have a quick fight in the in the tavern that they wake up in. Then they go outside and they have to really escape the city and they find that out. Um, then they have a showdown with, you know, the big bad evil guy, so to speak. And then the final scene where, you know, it's kind of a narrative wrap up. And, you know, I basically, I think I had maybe one page of notes written down, you know, scene one, this is what's going to happen. Scene two, this is what's going to happen. Scene three, this is what, you know. So most of the prep that I did for that was just figuring out how to make, you know, YouTube and, and Google work and Dice Stream and all that. Um, but now that I know that, yeah, I don't need to do a lot of prep. And it went well. The players had fun because I am comfortable improv And that's what I wanted to talk about, I guess, as the focus for the video is improv DMing because that, I think, is one of the most valuable skills you can learn as a game master is to be able to have your idea, give the players enough that they get started, and then let them build the session, let them play it out, let them do the work. Now that can be difficult with some players, especially those that are shy, that are new, you know, whatever. And, and that, that requires in-game work from you, the DM. But if they're playing with other players and if, if it's a group that's tight knit and friends with each other, that stuff's gonna happen organically. It's gonna be, you know, fine. And some players will sit back and be quiet and let the more comfortable seasoned veteran role players do their thing and have fun. And I think that's the most important part is allowing your players to play and have fun and don't railroad them into the story that you kind of want to unfold. You know, um, I know... Matt Click on a Fistful of Dice was talking about, you know, how you have fun first, story second, rules third. And I totally agree with that. You know, he he was saying that the most important thing is to have fun. And if you're not having fun, well, why the heck would you be playing this game? So that's what I try to do is set it up so that they have fun. But where that ties into improv DMing is inevitably they're going to do something or say something. And sometimes players will come up with a stupid idea and you know you'll be like okay you can do that but you know it's a whole yes but yes and kind of you know no however 
kind of DM style. But occasionally they'll do something where they're like, well, you know, I want to do this thing because I think it's really cool. And you hadn't planned for that, you know, or I want to go off in this direction because this makes sense. And I think this would be a really neat thing. And you're like, oh, okay. You know, that was unexpected. First of all, that's good when that happens um, because your player's thinking creatively. So I try to allow that to happen, you know, um, and so I'll be like, yeah, okay, great. Let's do that. And then I'll steer it, you know, in that direction. And sometimes it's easy to steer it back to the final conclusion that you had. But the problem is if you've prepped too much and you have all this stuff lined up and you got to do this in this order and this order and this order, that free form, that improv is difficult. And if you're not a seasoned game master, you might end up being like, no, you can't do that. Um, I'm going to railroad you into this. And I mean, you're not going to say that, but you know what I mean? Like you're going to transition it into where you want them to go instead of where they want to go. So I would just, I love other people's thoughts on, you know, kind of how they do this. Uh, this is obviously not a new style. This is something that, that most, I would say probably most DMs do is really kind of, you know, prep a basic outline and then let the players run the show to an extent. But I'd like to hear, you know, about how other people do that. What, you know, what do you guys do for prep? Um, how you incorporate that once the game starts? You know, that, that, that would be something I think that, you know, is, is really useful for other game masters, especially new game masters, to figure out. And also, how do you guys handle that? And, and does that process change when you're running, let's say, a weekly campaign where maybe you're doing a four or five hour session every week versus, let's say, a three hour one shot? So let me know what you guys do and I'd love some feedback. Take care.